Hello everyone. Welcome back to my DIY channel. Today, we're going to transform a simple spoon, something you think is only used when eating, into a unique and super cool item. Are you ready to unleash your creativity? Hit like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and let's get started right now. After drilling a hole in the center of the spoon, the smooth metal surface now has a clean, round opening. Next, take a tire valve and prepare it to pass through the hole in the spoon. Before that, remove the valve core inside the tire valve. This step ensures the valve is hollow and allows for easier modification later. To pass through the hole in the spoon, I need to unscrew and remove the nut from the valve. This step makes it easier to insert the valve for the drilled opening, ensuring a snug and secure fit once the nut is tightened back on later. It's time to move on to the wiring, the heart of this DIY mini welder. First, I'll strip the ends of each wire. You can adjust the temperature yourself by changing the wiring or adding a resistor. It's super flexible for small welding tasks. Now, insert the tire valve for the hole in the spoon. Push it in carefully until the base of the valve sits firmly against the metal surface. After the valve is pushed through, screw the nut back onto the threaded end. Tighten it until the valve is firmly locked in place against the spoon surface. This secures the valve so it won't move during use, giving the spoon a solid, modified structure. Take a piece of PVC pipe that matches the size of the spoon's handle to create the grip. The pipe will serve as an insulated handle, making it easier and safer to hold a modified spoon during use. Next, feed the electrical wire through the tire valve. Slide the wire carefully so it passes all the way through the hollow center of the valve. This setup allows the wire to be neatly guided and securely held in place by the valve. Preparing the spoon for its function as a welding tool. Wrap electrical tape around the spoon to secure the wire in place. Make sure the tape is tight and even so the wire stays firmly attached to the spoon without slipping through. Watch the video until the end, and let me know which method you like the most. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. Wrap some tissue paper around the spoon to create padding. Then insert it into the PVC pipe handle. The paper helps fill the gaps and makes the spoon fit tightly inside the pipe, keeping it stable and secure. Apply a small amount of super glue onto the tissue paper before sliding. 
sliding the spool into the PVC pipe. The glue will bond the paper to the pipe's inner surface, making the handle more solid and preventing any movement during use. To complete the wiring, I'll attach an alligator clip to the other end. It makes the connection quick, secure, and easy to attach when needed. I'll add another wire to connect from a negative terminal. This will complete the circuit and allow current to flow properly through the soldering tip. For this wire, I'll attach alligator clips to both ends. That way, it's easy to connect and disconnect from both the power source and the device. The alligator clips act as flexible terminals. They grip tightly onto wires, battery terminals, or metal parts, making it easy to test and adjust connections during prototyping. Plus, they save time by eliminating the need for permanent joints. I've got quite an old battery lying around, perfect for experimenting with this mini welding setup. Instead of throwing away, I'm going to repurpose the inner cord battery and turn it into a soldering tip, a clever way to give new life to old materials. I'll carefully extract the inner core from one of these old batteries. This core is usually made from conductive metal, and its size makes it perfect for precise soldering tasks. When doing this, it's important to be cautious. Avoid touching any leaky material and always work in a well-ventilated area. Once the casing is removed, I'll trim and shape the core to fit our valve connection. It's a great way to recycle and repurpose parts that would otherwise go waste. Next. I'll grind the battery core to shape it into a fine soldering tip. This will help it heat up evenly and work more precisely. Now that it's been ground to the right shape, the core fits snug into the valve. And just like that, we've turned it into a working soldering tip. For the power source, I'll be using a standard motorcycle battery. It's a 12V lead acid battery, powerful enough to heat up the soldering tip and stable for small electronics work. This type of battery is easy to find, rechargeable, and delivers consistent current, which makes it perfect for our DIY soldering project. Before welding, I'll preheat the soldering tip.
Start by using it to weld a small joint between two electrical wires. As the current flows through, the metal tip of the spoon heats up and fuses the wire ends together, showing that the tool can successfully perform basic welding tasks. After the test, the welded joint between the wires appears solid and firmly bonded. The insulation around the connection shows slight signs of melting, but the copper inside is securely fused together. The joint holds strong when pulled, proving that the improvised welding tool can create a reliable connection. As I bring the soldering tip to the joint, the solder begins to melt and flow smoothly onto the razor blade and the strip wire. The tin spreads evenly, bonding the wire to the metal surface in a single shiny solder joint. After just a few seconds, it cools and solidifies, creating a strong, clean connection between the wire and the razor blade. Let's test it with aluminum foil. Wow, it works so well. It heats up quickly creates clean welds and operates smoothly without any interruptions. A total success. What do you guys think? Do you like this idea? Don't forget to leave a comment and share your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and see you in the next video. Goodbye.